All right, welcome back. Um, I'm actually in the middle of working on this material. I was inspired by the recent cold weather here in New York. I, I live right on the Hudson and we had ice flows, which is really cool. Um, so I decided I wanted to make some ice flows. I'm actually still working on this material. I want to, uh, I'm sort of trying to reacquaint myself with Unreal and I, I thought this would be a good thing to do for refraction, uh, but not this part. The actual, right now all we have here is just a solid white color. So this could actually be replaced with any kind of snow material. I just want to build one by hand um, because I, I'm using it as an exercise to get used to Unreal. But this bit right here, this is this is the sort of business end of the ice flow anyway. And this is the first time I've used an effects map not for a noise. Uh, because I was trying to think of a way of building these guys uh, that was kind of more efficient energy-wise. And I decided that, hey, I can use effects maps for other things too. So we are going to be using effects maps and um, this is my part of it. It, it actually, the, the material is in two sections. Um, this is this first material, which most of the action happens, um, isn't the final material. This is just creating a normal map, a mask, and a height map for the um, ice flows themselves. And then in this other material that I have, do I even have it open here? Yeah. Um, in this one, I'm mixing it. Eventually, this is going to be a material mix because I'm going to create another material that um, instead of just mixing colors right now, I can mix the two materials. So this part of it is less about the mechanics of making the ice float. This is here. It's more about tweaking the two materials together. Um, this one that we were just looking at is where most of the action happens. Uh, and it is run by effects maps. So if you haven't already, taken a look at my two videos that I've made for uh, the FX map intro videos. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you do that before you continue with this video because I'm not going to dwell on how FX maps work here. And if you haven't done it before, you probably want to check that stuff out first. If you have done it before, what we're doing here, just in, in brief, is in this area over here, we're making the input images that are going to go in here. And we're going to use two separate input images. So we have two separate iceberg sort of proto shapes. I tried it with, with one. Uh, it kind of got, it, it needed more variety. You can go ahead and do four, but it might be a little expensive because each one of these has to have calculations run in it. So I settled on two. But eventually what we're going to do is we're going to take each of these two shapes, we're going to randomize them in here differently. And then we're going to take these and then we're going to group them together. So you're taking, you're, you're doing two sets of randomizations. And then once we've created our basic effects map, which looks like this. Let's get rid of our 3D view for the moment. Um, so we've got we've got this happening. This is our actual raw effects map as it comes out of here. Then we do a bunch of stuff to it in here um, to get it ready to look like actual icebergs or ice flows rather by the time it gets out here. So it's not nearly as bad as it looks because this is in fact, this is exactly what's going on up here. We're just doing it to a different vector graphic. So we're going to do this one and then we're just going to copy it and we're going to plug in this second vector graphic. 
and then we'll get to the business of the effects map. So let's go ahead and open up a new substance. Uh, I'm going to call this small flow because I'm still, the other one's still a work in progress and I don't really want to close it. So I'm going to call this small, small flow one and then the bigger one we'll call small, small flow two, but you can call it whatever you want. Make it empty, make it PBR, it doesn't matter. We're going to end up with three nodes. I think it's easier to delete them than it is to make new ones. So I usually go for this option. We're going to want a normal. Uh, we're not going to want a metallic. We are going to want a height. And we're also going to want a mask. And I'm just going to use, repurpose that roughness as a mask. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to change the identifier. I'm going to change the label. And I'm going to keep the grouping that they have since all the other ones are like that. And then in here, the important part is that I'm going to change this to mask. Okay, so we're all, we're all set up with our outputs now. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to create two basic iceberg shapes. And we're going to do it from resource. And we will call this berg1. And then we're going to make another one while we're up here. And we're going to call it berg2. And right away, I, I don't need these. I'm just doing this off of my old settings. We don't need these to be terribly dense because they're, they're really just doing this. It's easier for me to see if, well, actually, we're going to switch them to black and white anyway. So why don't we just do that? Okay. Um, we're also going to go into our output size and bring these down to 128 because there's no need to have them at 256. We're also going to bring the pixel size down to 0.5. And what this is going to do, it's, it's, it's going to make them lighter. Uh, we don't need, these do not need to be heavy. Right. So I'm guessing that people have fooled around with this, but if you haven't, um, we, this is, we can make vector graphics inside of Substance Designer. And, you know, the, the, just like the blending, just like the blend node, uh, if you've got it color, you're going to get an alpha channel as well. If you've got it in grayscale, you're not going to get an alpha channel. In here, if you use the pen tool, you have the choice of drawing freehand, which I hardly ever use. Um, but it gives you like a gajillion little nodes, which if I'm using this, I'm usually using the path. So I'm going to make like an ice. Oh, yeah, I've got it set to path. It just seems very wide that why is it making, is it making hundreds and hundreds of, no, as long as, long as it's not making hundreds and hundreds of points. So I'm going to try to, I don't want to go out to the edges too much because we're going to be doing some other stuff out there, but I'm just going to go and I'm going to make a vaguely ice flowy shape. And while we're at it, we might as well come in here and make another ice flowy shape here too, but a different one. Because this way, when we mix them together, it's not going to look like... If you do it with the same one, it, it, it starts looking a little bit too patterned. So, I mean, there's no specifics on the shape that you're going to use for these, but, you know, just make them different. So we're going we're gonna to put this, this guy away for now because we're going to do exactly the same thing to this one as we're going to do to this one up top here. First thing I'm going to work on is... Um, I want to get this to stand up a little bit. So I'm going to go into my library and I'm going to get a bevel node. And I know we've used this before because I love the bevel node. And I'm just looking at my notes. I had this set 
to 0.15. But again, this is your ice flow. You can set it however you want. But this is going to determine sort of that the, the, you know, that's your little flow rising up over there. You can even visualize it. So you're giving it its little edges there. The other thing we're going to do is I'm going to change this corner type from round to angular. So it's going to look more like a snowdrift or like an icebergy thing. So let's just set that to that. All right. So we, we've we've created we've created that. Now now the next thing we need to do is you know when when I was looking at the ice flows that they, they're not. They don't just come like they don't just stop. It's not land. They have like little bits and pieces that are coming off of them. And you know, they're kind of agitating in the water. And so what we want to do is we want to create that around it. Um there's a there's a bunch of different ways to do that, and I was playing around with a lot of them. I settled on warp. And then I got uh, Clouds 2 out of the library to warp it against. And again, I set this output size down to 1, uh, negative 1 rather. And again, the pixel width, pixel size rather to 0.5. Right, so that is what we're going to be warping it against. And we're going to bring this way up. So I'm going to start with 10 and see what happens. And that's probably close to what I want. I want to be careful. I'm going to hit this. I'm clicking here and hitting the space bar. The only thing that I'm concerned about is I don't want to start seeing. Oh, and that's the other thing we need to do here. Um, completely forgot. Both of our vector graphics. We want to set to no tiling. So we have to set this to absolute and then no tiling because otherwise we're going to run into problems potentially as we uh, start moving things around in here. Um, where are we? Tiling mode, absolute, no tiling. All right, I'm going to bring him back down here. So we have we have this, which is it's looking pretty good. And this this area here is what's going to be happening sort of on the edges of our ice flow here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to blend these two guys, right? So we have we're going to have the berg on top. We're going to have this underneath. And let's bring it, let's make it a lighten. So you're starting to get the idea where, where you're now having these edges that are going to show up underneath your ice flow. So far, so good. Um, we want to do a couple of things here. We need to make a mask for this beveled shape because the, the bevel is actually bringing the edges farther out than this. So we, we can't use this as a mask anymore because it's going to cut out all that other stuff out there. And again, this is something we've done before many times at this point. I'm going to get a levels node. I'm always doing that. I'm going to get this. It's probably easier to check like this. This is going to cut some of it off because we've got, you see how it made that smaller? I mean, you might want it like that. But here, if you, you know, this has got, this is getting, you're getting more transparent as you're going down here. So what you need to do is you just need to bring this down. I'm kind of double clicking on here again and single clicking here. 
we want to bring this down so that we're seeing more of our um, of our ice flow there. So you see how this is now completely covering. We've got almost no, I mean, we want a little bit of sort of gray out, but, but almost no gray out at all. And now we have this big berg. I think what we're going to do is maybe make this guy a little bit smaller. So I can come back in here. And if I use that tool here, I'm in here. I'm going to double click in here. I'm going to single click in here. There we go. And I'm going to use this tool. Why is it not picking up my vector graphic? Very weird. There we go. Oh. Okay. So I can just make it smaller like this. I'm holding shift to, to keep my image the same and I can move it around like that. I want a little bit more stuff on the outside so I'm just making that middle bit smaller. And what it's done now, you see it, because these are all connected everything scaled down the same except for this back part, well actually this did too, but um, it's still giving me more because I, I had those edges coming all the way out and I was having this cover up a lot of it. So I'm happier with it this way. Right. Now, there's one thing still going on with this map, though, uh, that's, is this right? Something's going on here. Let me make this a little bit less tight. I think that's, yeah, that's better. I, I overcompensated. All right. these guys up here really want to be, if, if, if we're thinking about a height map, you see how this is getting lower down here? We really want the stuff that's down at this level to match up as far as its height is concerned. So in here I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to click levels. We're just going to take this, again I'm double clicking on this, single clicking on my levels node, I'm just going to make the whole thing darker. Did I click? There we go. So I'm trying to get that stuff to match up a little bit closer the height of the lower end of that berg. So probably more like that. And that's pretty much our basic shape. So what we can do is we can organize it because I like to be organized. And then we can just copy this whole thing. and paste it eventually and then just switch out this guy here and probably make it a little bit smaller too because we had to make the other one smaller. Let's take a look here. Yeah, I could probably do being a little bit smaller. So I'm going to double click again. Oh. There we go. And just scale it down a little bit. All right. So we have one iceberg shape and another iceberg shape. So we're good to go with setting up our FX maps. Okay, so we get our FX map. Again, just like here we're going to make four copies of the same map. 
so we're just going to work on one and then we're going to copy it out. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I want to do, I want to do my design on the diagonal. So that means, well, we can figure it out later. I'm going to do one and alternate my guys here. I'm going to do for my first one, I'm going to do number one, then two and three. I'm going to do with this one. And then the fourth one I'm going to do with this one. And what this is going to do for me is because what that does is it corresponds to the grids and the effects map. So did I put that in the right one? I think I put it in the background. Yep, I did. Okay, that was a mistake. This is the background uh, node, not the input node. My bad. I go like this and like this and like this and then like this because this first one's just a pass through so the minute you see your image appear there you know you've made a mistake unless that's what you intended to do of course um one two three four well i mean we can switch it around later it's just easier to remember uh corresponds to uh in, once you get in there in the grid one two three, four. So if I want my image to be based on a diagonal, I'm going to do one and four and then two, th two and three. So let's get into our effects map. I'm right clicking, edit effects map. And here we have our effects map. Um, I've highlighted that. I'm going to hit space bar quadrant. It's going to give me my, actually I probably didn't want to do that. Um, I want to do this. I'm again. I'm gonna. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of repetition here. Let. Oh no. This in this first one. Let's make a copy. And then I'm gonna do three more copies of that. Okay. And oh, I probably should have done our patterns before. Well, it doesn't matter because this is where we're going to be putting in different input images into each one of these. Yeah, I try to... I'm a big fan of saving doing this kind of niggly work. So I should have copied... I should have changed it to input image here first and then copied and pasted it. Because the what does have to be different is the stuff down here. Right now um, well, let's, we can't see what we're doing right now. Hold on. Let's double click there. Now we can see what we're doing. So let's get back at, into our effects map. So we've now split this up. Now each one of these right now should be, a, oh no, because we've all, they were all set to zero right now. So here is where we check, where we change that. I'm in my first quadrant. I've got my input image zero. I go to my second quadrant. I want this to be one, because it's, you know, they're using zero. So you want this to be one and two. And then this one we want to be three. So now we, we've got these two the same and these two the same. Okay. So the next thing we need to do, and this is where I kind of had to rethink the way I've normally used effects maps. Without, I'm not, we're not going to get random with this. I'm going to manually position all of these things so that they're going to kind of between them form an island if you will in the middle i'm i'm making the basic shape of of my iceberg right now oh we forgot to oh no it doesn't matter now here it doesn't matter because you're going to it's um that's the way it works there's the the tiling's fine 
you just have to scroll through. You have to scroll through. In other words, if you want to start going into net, if you want, you're going to, if I, I don't even know how to explain it, but you see what I'm saying that if, if I want to move it higher up, it's or lower down, it's going to have to scroll through and you have to use the, the next tiled image. It, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to screw you up. So I'm now notice how they're overlapping. This is going to create my higher points. of my, this is, we're going to turn this into a single Berg. So I'm moving on to the next one and I'm offsetting it. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking to make a pleasing shape, if you will. So I, that means I have to pass all the way through there. So yeah, I mean, again, take a little time doing this. Now remember, we're going to get the, we're going to set these to spinning around too. So you want to have enough overlap so that as they go through their, their little things that you're getting, you're getting enough. You know, you're getting enough areas where you're going to have high points and low points. And again, this depends on you know, what you want your thing to look like exactly. So you had to, no, it wants to, there we go. No, I still think that, mm. That's probably okay. Maybe, I don't know, which one is this, number two? I, and now it's hard to tell which one's which. That's no, not the one I wanted. I think it's the first one. Nope. Okay, so it's, you know, it'll, as this, as these things spin around, it'll give me a vaguely bergy shape. So this is this is the what we set up manually. Now once once we've done that, we want to really start to set them to spinning around. Um these are icebergs. They go really slowly. Before we do that, I'm coming out into the main graph. I'm just going to go ahead and make an input parameter now. Uh and I'm going to call this uh berg churn speed. Berg churn speed. The these numbers are going to be really, really small. That what's what's needed, you know, because I had tested it. What's actually needed for it is actually really small numbers, to the point where. Uh, it was getting a pain, it was getting to be a pain to do it directly so what i ended up doing in the um in the function was um i i ended up giving it an extra multiplier to bring it down some well, i'll show you in a minute but as a result i'm going to set this max to 10 and i'm going to make the default um one and we're going to set the steps to point one because there's point oh one is is meaningless and let's get into our effects map and you'll see you know what this whole thing needs to move up it's not centered let's before we go any further let's come back in here and, and set this up a little bit so I want everything to move up on the Y so confusing. Okay. So it's it's a little bit closer to center. I kind of like it with a little tail down there, so I'll leave that there. Okay. 
maybe a little higher up. I want more white. That's what I'm going for. I, I want a lot of, you know, I want a certain amount of area of overlap. So let's, let's get these guys to, to moving around now. We've got our offsets more or less squared away. And the only, the only thing that, that we really want to have happen in this particular effects map is to have the shape of this constantly change. So this is now, I think now I've got it too high. Let's bring it down a little bit. I, I just don't want it falling off too much of the edges. Um, if we uh, if we only spin now that we've got this set and it's not random, this is this is how we've set it. Uh, if we get each one of these to spin around very 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 slowly, the overall shape of this thing is going to change. So we're going to come in here into pattern rotation. We're going to create an empty function. And we're going to take, we're going to add a couple of variables. Seems very close. I'm going to copy that and paste it. So one of these is going to be my time. And the other one is going to be my Berg churn speed. Now you notice that th those numbers were, were pretty big. Uh, I'm going to add a multiplier here. So, because when, You'll see I'm adding like, you know, to the hundreds. Um, so I'm actually, whatever that number goes in there is going to be multiplied by 0 0.001, which is going to give me more of the kind of speed that I want. And once you start getting into these kind of tiny numbers, even if you set the step down, it's, it's, a, pain, it's a pain for the end user to use. So I prefer doing it like this. So it allows you to have bigger numbers in here. It's just easier to manipulate and you're just slowing it down in the actual function. So I'm going to add another operator, multiplication, and that's our output node. And then we go to our next one. So this is our top right. I'm just going to go now I'm just going to go down the line. Now I'm going to go horizontally. And we're going to do the same thing here. Oh, did we copy this? I don't think we did. I'm going to take this whole thing. I'm going to copy it. And come back in here, go into my next quadrant. And do the same thing all over again. Only this time I'm going to... Uh, get it to go into the get it to go in the opposite direction by putting a negation in there so they're they're not all spinning in the same direction because that kind of looks stupid and down the line again empty function paste set as output node and then the last one same thing And I'm going to, again, I'm going to get this one going in the opposite direction and set it as the output node. So now we've, um, this thing is changing shape. I want to take a look at this before we go any further. Um, I'm going to use the substance player because that's what I have set up right now. But in order for it to, I'm going to change this temporarily to um, a base uh, base color, just so it'll it'll read it. Oh, and this should be a normal. Let's take care of that right now, and we'll I don't know, let's put it up to three for now. Fill alpha with input.
All right, so we'll go ahead and publish this to our composite library, composite landscapes in my sus substance library, which is where I'm working on my isoflow right now. And we'll save that to the same spot as well. And then I'm going to go into Substance Player, which is basically got the same kinds of outputs as, um, I mean, it's, it's the same idea as Substance Designer. It's, it's really designed for the same people to use. Your height map is going to be just where you find it in your Substance Designer. You go Materials, Default, Edit, and then you can get your height map and you can set it here. And I've noticed that the settings are different and it takes a lot less in, in Substance Player. So you, you kind of have, you, you're not really using the same settings that you had before. Okay, so this is the one I have in there now. Um, pretty happy with it so far. Yeah, I just, at this point, all it really needs is that material on top. But let's open this new one we made, which... I want to make sure that I'm getting the archive files, so I'm going to come down here and make sure it's the right one. And there we go. Let's stop this. And there we go. So it's starting, it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do, right? So it's slowly moving around, that churn speed. I mean, because you, you, honestly, I mean, at 10, which is, I guess, 0.1, it's going at a pretty good clip for, for a nice flow. But again, those, those numbers, those, that's a personal thing. So we're almost at 40 minutes. I think we're going to stop this video here. And we're going to continue. Uh, we're going to make one more effects map. We're going to take this map and we're going to make, well, why don't we do that now? I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste three copies. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing we just did here where we have, you know, we, oops, I made an extra. So we're, you know, we're going from two to four, and then now we're going to, we we're going to, again, we're going to use all four inputs in the next one, and we're going to bring them all back together, and we're going to start grouping them with randomization now. So we, we set the individual, we got the, we got the basic shape from our vector graphic, we did all, all our stuff to it. In this one, we are just making the, the shape itself change shape. And then in the next one, we're actually going to be making the basic ice flows. So that's it for now, and we'll pick it up from here in the next video.